Oye, oye, oye! Let it be known that of this day we shall learn of the history of this most prettiest of towns. How it was born out of fire, rebellion and sanctuary to become the fine city we see before us this very With day. With that description, we could only be in the heart of the Lagan Valley. Yes, we're in busy, bustling, prosperous Lisbon. Lisburn Town was founded in the early 17th century. Its name in Irish, pardon the pronunciation, is Lishnagarvach, which apparently means Fort of the Gamesters. One of the local very successful sporting teams still bears the original name of the town. Long before Lisburn came into being, this area, just a few miles outside the city, with its panoramic views, was considered rather special by the High Kings of Ulster, no less. I'm on Crewe Hill, the highest piece of arable land in Ireland. And indeed, from this spot, you can see all six counties of Northern Ireland. It was right here that those High Kings of Ulla used to get together. Ireland's equivalent, I suppose, of Camelot and the Knights of the Round Table. From the ancient kings through to Jacobean times, the town prospered, but with a history as dynamic and turbulent as any on these shores. Cue the music. By the early 1600s, Lisburn was a thriving metropolis with a total of all of 52 tenements. But even such a small number of dwellings was enough to form the basic town plan, which is still very much in existence today. The lord of this manor was one Sir Fulk Conway, now, the king granted land to those barons who proved they could defend it, and he was rewarded for his pains with 50,000 acres in South Antrim, including the townland of Lisnagarvey in the parish of Blairs. He built his castle, of course, more of a manor house, if truth be told, but he called it his castle. Nothing remains of the castle, but the market is still going strong. In fact, there's been a market each and every Tuesday for years, since 1628 to be precise. Oh, look, <laughs> original stock. <laughs> Do you have that in a medium? Oh! How much for your fine turnip, sir? Three tuckets, sir. I'll give you two. Deal done. Great. Thank you. But these were tough times. By 1641, the natives were restless. They felt that the English settlers who'd been invited over here by Sir Folks had outstayed their welcome. And what followed was a bloody and ruthless battle right across Ulster, but particularly here in Lisnagarvey, which had stayed loyal to the Crown. According to folk, 500 rebels were slain in the streets. And the head of one of the pipers was blown off with such savagery that it rolled down this very hill. And since then, this laneway has been called Piper's Hill. Ouch. That night, the rebels set the town alight, reducing it to ashes. And some years later, the town became known as Lisburn, prompting some smart Alex to assume it was because of the fire. Anyway, the town was to live up to its name one more time, as we shall see later. But from the ashes, the new town became bigger and brighter. One army chaplain called newly refurbished Lisburn one of the prettiest towns in Ireland. Generals recognising its strategic importance made it their headquarters. Even King Billy dropped in en route to the boy. Tea for me and still orange for you, <laughs> Your Majesty. Oh, very good, my good Duke, very good. Even King Billy stopped off in this very house in Market Square en route to the boy. What did Oscar Wilde say? Once is misfortune, twice it's just carelessness. Well, Lisburn really did live up to its name. The first fire deliberate, the second one a tragic accident and a very careless one. Lisburn's equivalent of Pudding Lane happened in 1707, when a wee woman was throwing the ashes from her fire out through the window, as you did. Ashes landed on a pile of rubbish, wind caught the sparks, half an hour later, the whole town's up in flames. And after two major fires, perhaps it's no wonder that the headquarters for the Northern Ireland Fire Service are based here in the town. The castle didn't survive the fire, nor did the cathedral or any other churches. But a small piece of wall on the gateway to the castle courtyard did. So believe it or not, this is a very rare surviving part of the old town. Psst. 
listen very carefully. I will say this only once. My name is René and I live here at the Blacksmith Cottage avec my beautiful wife, stupid woman, and my trois enfants. I am a Huguenot and I've had to leave my beloved France because of that horrible man, Louis XIV. He wants no Protestants in France. So I have come to this beautiful place. Good call, Renny Bulmore. Are those Catholics and Protestants get along so well here? But strangely enough, those Huguenots who came to Lisburn got all the credit for bringing the linen industry, even though it was developing before they arrived with their fancy skills. Still, they gave Lisburn prestige and soon its beautiful damask linens found their way onto the tables of kings and nobility of Europe. Did you know there was a hanging here in Market Square? Henry Munro, linen draper and leader of the United Irishmen at the Battle of Balna Hinch, was captured, tried and hanged here in full view of his own house and shop. Named and shamed, his head was stuck on a pike and left here to rot for months afterwards to serve as a warning to others to steer well clear of political agitation. I suppose it was kind of the, the asbo of its day, but a bit more severe. Here's a disturbing tale I found in the newsletter in the issue dated Tuesday 27th of August 1822. About seven o'clock on the evening, a lad of 16 tied John Young, a very fine boy of about six years old, to a cow's tail. The animal, terrified by the unusual weight, appended to her tail, took flight and rushed through the turnpike on the Hillsborough Road. By the time help had arrived, the poor child, confused and mangled by percussion, had expired. It's a terrible story, Linda, isn't it? It's really awful. Yes, it is, and the poor mother saw the lifeless corpse of her son being dragged behind the tail of a cow when she came back from Belfast. She never recovered, hence she wanted the words assassinated to be written on the gravestone. He will always be remembered by the people of Lisburn and he's buried in the grounds of this beautiful cathedral. And whilst we're here, we have to mention the Quakers and also Richard Wallace. The Quakers, or Friends as they're known, did much to help the poor and the sick throughout Ireland, particularly during the famine. And nowhere was their presence felt more than here in Lisburn. In the late 18th century, they set up a school to... Instruct young lads and maidens in whatsoever things were civil and useful in creation. And today, Friends School is still going strong. As too is Wallace High School, founded in 1880 by Richard Wallace, whose huge wealth and generosity have given so much to the town. Whilst living in Paris during its brutal siege in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, Wallace was famed for his philanthropy and later gave many fountains, still known in Paris as Les Wallaces, declaring that never again should the poor die of thirst. And he brought five of those fountains to Lisbon of which this is one of two surviving. A very cultured chap are Mr Wallace. His art collection, the world-famous Wallace Collection in London, is worth millions and it includes the Laughing Cavalier. Although I like this version a bit better than the original. What do you think? And that takes us up to today's modern, thriving, vibrant Lisburn. It became a city in 2002 and it's going from strength to strength. So there you have it. That's your pocket history of Lisburn. <laughs>